sure what's the purpose of the visit. Well, uh, uh, there is an opportunity for Guam export mm -hmm. for free range eggs. All right. And uh, one business fr businessman from from Guam mm -mm. would like the USDA to check, certify, and accredit specific farm regarding regarding the U uh, the quality of the eggs that will be sending. Mm -hmm. Because the eggs from Guam is coming from the mainland. California it takes around from by ship three weeks by ship right wow more or less more or less yeah so it's not yet it's not fresh anymore stop yeah freshness and the the Filipino community there in Guam is a lot mm -mm. so they like more fresh produce mm -mm. so this is opening hopefully opening new opportunities for local farmers mm -mm. on a more specialized system because the problem is we cannot keep up with the volume production the only way we can keep up with the export is high value crops mm -hmm. high value produce we received a request from the philippine bureau of animal industry mm -hmm. um, to ship uh, table eggs to guam mm -hmm. and we provided a protocol mm -hmm. To the Bureau of Animal Industry to review how we think it can be done mm -hmm. in a manner that doesn't disseminate animal disease mm -hmm. and um, we're waiting for the AI to respond and in the interim we're visiting different scale of egg operations to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. The protocol does not specify between organic eggs or free-range eggs or commercial mm -hmm. eggs. It's just table eggs from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it provides a, a, a framework for how they could be safely shipped. And it, it's, it's uh, while the impetus is Guam, mm -hmm. it's really um, for the whole U.S. All right. Now the economics probably doesn't support shipping table eggs to the mainland U.S. because of the cost. Yes, yes. But it would be cost effective for Guam and maybe Hawaii, I don't know. But Uh, direct, yeah. Apo. Dok, ano, lampas na ako sa palengke ng Umingan. Palengke ng Umingan. Na, na ano yung bayan? Yung Apo, kaliwa, lampas na po ako doon. Papunta okay, na ako ng Nueva Ecija. Antay ka lang, may, may tulay na malaki yung bagong gawa. Aha. Uh, diretso ka pa. Tapos, ka, eto, ka, nasa ni Landbank kami Umingan eh. So, palengke halos to, di ba? Ah, okay. Tapos, Sige, sir. Okay, nasa likod kami. Sobrang na. Ang layo na. Ha? No? Oh, oh. May tuloy ba doon sa Sangkinti? Hello. Hello, Doc. Yes. Ah, uh, Doc, tama ba ako papuntang San Jose? Ah, uh, hindi. Diretso Sangkinti. Ah, Sangkinti. Ah. Oo. Kumana ka? Ah, uh, nandito. Balik ako, sir. Okay, Opo. sige sir, habol ka. Apo, apo. Uh, ah. Pakunta sa kintin pa yun. Oo. Nagtataka ako kasi ang layo ko na eh. Yun siya ang tao. Ayun sila. Oo, oh, yun sila. May pa expedition. Oo. Oh, Lapit ko na nang sakos. Doctor. Sakos. <laughs> Short time. Sila na kami. Yes. Uh, I'd like to meet direct uh, body from my business. I'm a doctor from Ah, uh, okay. Nice Julie meeting you, Bobby. Hello. And Russell from USDA. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi. Good morning. Then we met. So we met a bit. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes
setting up a solar solar pump mm -hmm. okay. yes pa may uh, next week mm -hmm. visit kami sa Batangas if you want to join too yes pa so you can link already and you know you can prepare for your ano diba vlogging mm -hmm. duktong duktong na yan tapos yun sa Batangas then Quezon may pwede mo na schedule din yun mm -hmm. Nadami naman nanood nung episode natin, Doc. Grabe, oo. Oh. <laughs> Nagulat din ako eh. Sa karaming tanong. Dami <laughs> Itong <laughs> <laughs> farmer na to. Apo. Nine years na siya nagpa-farming. Mm -hmm. Tapos, originally, he's just a crop farmer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Palay, squash, yeah. papaya. Mm -hmm. Then, he tried to do the program made mistakes along the way but he corrected it mm -mm. now he has this breeder farm wow he started slowly with uh -oh. about 40 breeders mm -mm. now he's hitting 100 plus or 200 mm -mm. so sustainable yung sa kanya yung system mm -mm. put but put yeah put plus put plus please and objective is to show people that the program sustainable for those who are really interested and really passionate mm -mm. in doing the program mm -mm. it's not quick money yes yes people forget that farming is about patience and a passion yeah it's isolated yeah. In terms of biosecurity, it is, uh, it is good because it's isolated from other farms, far away from other chicken farms, nearest farmer. After doing the trial and error, mm -hmm. he went into breeding. Once he got into breeding, it's a time that the business uh, accelerated mm -hmm. because parang may ready-made market ka na agad eh. mm -hmm. Which is very rare in this kind of uh, farming agriculture may ready market ka and you can command your own price very good ito yung mga farmhouse ah house I just go for the local market all night for now. So the capacity of this is about uh, two to three hundred, but I have only now for about almost two. So this is the ranging area. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Have your own house. Yeah. And do people come here or do you take the eggs? I will take the eggs. Uh, you collect and take the eggs out. into the town. Yeah. So uh, the town we came through? Uh, yes, but I'm sorry, I'm not sure the name yeah, of it. But we, we, we sell it direct directly to our customer. It's the direct selling from oh, the direct to the household. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mostly, mostly. And other from maybe the marketplace in our in our town, like my mom selling it to the town in the market. Mm -hmm. But uh, mostly it's the direct direct selling. You can you can go in to check the, the chicken food. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead, we also here. Go ahead. This is free ranging area. Yeah. So they have cage and they have also free range? Uh, no, they only sell free range eggs. Oh, this is okay. the, these two are the housing. But oh. the chickens are ranged throughout the day and then they go home at, at night. At night and in the afternoon. The, the house. Yes. When and the sun this comes. one, they are just the breeders? These say the breeder house. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This is a uh, probiotic lace. Uh. It's more on a natural supplement. We do fermentation. Mm -hmm. So we do not need to do chemical uh, vitamins. Nice collection. Yeah. Uh, we have to gather it all uh, three to four times a day. Three to four times? Yeah. So you can have, uh, we do not collect the depths, uh, so you can <laughs> see them then personally. 
Like this hen is sitting on more eggs. She's being very protective. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I uh, collect the eggs about now, about three to four times a day. Yeah. Very nice size. Yeah. So. <laughs> can have to check it in the pocket so you can see the quality of the eggs later. Mm -hmm. I have to get some between the eggs and not the pocket. about food market, so for, for local demand only yeah. mm -hmm. once uh, things get commercial mm -hmm. they will increase the volume accordingly yeah and we will increase also the housing also. Yeah. add uh, more housing that matches the demand more so that's it so they have better happier ranging area here yeah. uh -huh. more insects actually they get more insects of that kind of environment because of the shade because of the leaves, they get more protein there. Actually, the the fish net provide protection against um, big lizards and uh, snakes. So it's more for protection. And also, he secured these houses so that no problem with intrusions. Yeah. Animal health authorities monitor the wild bird population. Yes. They have mapped out already where the migration of the migratory birds are. Mm -hmm. It's basically concentrated in the Pampanga area, Pampanga area where there's a swamp. swamp. swamp area. Well, along so the that's bay. their stopover. Mm -hmm. yeah. But along this area, it's uh, indigenous local birds local only. Birds. Yeah. It's not part of the migratory path of the animal. That's why when you check all the issues of outbreaks it's near Pampanga it's where the areas the last two cases Bulacan. were in, in Bulacan and Pampanga and mm -hmm. those areas are part of the path of the, of the migratory, migratory no no declared issue since yet for uh, AI here and when you have food delivered the, the truck has to stop over there yes, yes, yes. and then you have to carry the food yeah, here, right the the For now, we have uh, we have four trays a day uh, for for, uh, for local for local. For local. They just build their stock based on the demand in the local market. Yeah. 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 So if it's uh, they have 500 capacity, yeah, once it's fully uh, occupied, around uh, produces 450 a day. Yeah. Oh, okay. 450 a day, one house, so two houses. Plus later on, it will be expanding if needed. Yeah. Very, very, uh, you know. Because uh, we also teach other farmers to go like this for this mm -hmm. in the locality. And you have a lot of breeding. Yeah, we have the breeding, too. we have the broading, and we have the grow out for the dispersal in the government project. Oh, I see. Okay. The combination of male and female, so the males are going to purpose for meat. We call okay. it the inner salt type. Okay. So these are much younger. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to uh, pass that boundary of going to the shelves. Because once you go to the shelves, that's the time that uh, uh, you have to follow strict government rules on that. And uh, they are... When you say go to the shelves? Uh, uh, supermarket. Oh, the supermarket. Okay. And the market here in this area is mostly farm to home. 
they like it fresh mm -hmm. they just want it delivered in their houses mm -hmm. they, they they don't like it to be staying long out of in the shelves after one or day two you have to deliver right mm -hmm. yeah. 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 the freshness is really a big factor to make it uh, uh more saleable because there's a big difference in taste in terms of quality also i can't remember the last time we met if we talked about the new animal welfare chapter for Lanehen. Yes, um, I'm one of the co-chairman of the standards for the Philippine National Standards on that. On the Lanehen, because yeah. you, you know there's a, a bit of a debate um, in preparation for the OIE general session okay. on the specificity of the language in the OIE chapter. Uh huh. And uh, and it's not an issue here in an environment like this. But, right, uh, right. But I, I guess there's a move to make the language more flexible with regard to dust bathing areas and perches and hens. Yeah. Nesting sites. It, it actually, the larger commercial correct. producers. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I was just wondering what your position on that well, would be. Well, for me, that's the right way to do, to do it because I see these two types of production, the commercial, which secures food security and we have other f uh, consumers who sec uh, wants more health conscious type of uh, produce you have to strike a balance between these two and that's the compromise that uh, we put on the table that they have to compromise over commercialism versus uh, the stress or the behavioral stress that you will allow the animal to go into right so for us it's easier because we're doing the system already yeah. we don't we have dust bats we have perching sticks we have uh, a good space uh, yeah, ratio it's, it's all part of the uh, yeah yeah the habitat. yeah and of course issues of sustainability because big farms can never go into this kind of level of farming and uh, they we need to strike a balance between food security and uh, animal welfare mm -hmm. that's the the mindset that I'm trying to cultivate in that uh, in that standard that it has to be a balance that everybody has a chance to grow their own chicken and produce that own program when I was consulting Vietnam you can study the bird flu incidents there mm -hmm. over the bird flu incidents here what are the main differences yeah. because we have similar uh, farming rice fields mm -hmm, right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. duck farming Mm -hmm. how come they have more outbreaks there compared to us yeah so right. we can have a cross study tropical climate is very similar actually vietnam has very high incidence very high actually and they're Thailand vaccinating already works. but it seems that it's not too uh too effective how is it in taiwan they, they get outbreaks every once in a while but it's quite controlled, right? It's but it's, it's controlled. controlled and they euthanize and depopulate and, no. and compost the body. Compost, yeah, and yeah. They compost because the, the heat from the compost will neutralize the body. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So Probiotics actually, also. Actually, if, if, a, if a farm like this got in Taiwan, got HPAI, they would uh, come in, they would depopulate, and they would pile all the birds in a pile and cover it with plastic and let, the, and let the heat neutralize the virus and after i forget the time period but then the chicken is used as fertilizer it's yeah. round up and, and put into the natural body. fertilizer so. yeah i think the u.s is also doing the same thing now right yeah we do the yeah. same thing but but the, you know the commercial barns are so big in the u.s yeah. They actually compost okay. inside the barn. Yeah, they don't do it compost outside. inside. Yeah. Bury them there and uh, pile them up. Right, and then and then after so many weeks, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember the number of weeks, they grind grind them up and spread it as fertilizer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, one and a half month, actually. Is it six weeks? Yeah, I think it's approximately six weeks. weeks. Mm -hmm. That's why we're doing it. The main difference here is that there you get compensated. 
Yeah, in, in here, we just yeah, start again. They, they, <laughs> they, have still, very little. <laughs> they still complain that they don't get compensated enough. Yes. Not enough. <laughs> because they want to cover the profit also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every farmer would complain that it's not enough. <laughs> in, in Taiwan, there's a compensation plan too, but it's not it's not 100% compensation. So there's a percentage. Yeah. And there's an age level. I think in the Netherlands they have an age when your breeder is this cap uh, age, you get this compensation, etc. Et I think the, the calculation can get a little complicated. Program yes, it, the, the DA made a big leap because of these problems with a ASF, mm -hmm. bird flu, that they now, uh, now see, they could see the urgency yeah. of doing this. But uh, yeah, it's just a matter of yeah. connecting things up. Right, um, right, right. to make it very, very substantial yeah. for farmers to to get uh, some uh, benefit because I've been hearing from from uh, other farmers that uh, yeah they, they complain that DAI or DA doesn't have enough budget for intermediate program now that these things are happening and they started to learn the necessity on it they increase I think they increase the budget Actually, this is a wake-up call for yeah, everybody. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. actually to reformat a lot of things in farming, mm -hmm. and even agroeconomics has to be reformatted in the provinces because uh, it's like simple commodity with no value. It's like just paying off your loans, etc. Mm -hmm. You have to put back the value to the farmers to make it more substantial for everybody, mm -hmm. even the consumers. Because if you get cheap quality feedstuff or food the consumer get affected the health gets affected DOH will be affected all of this yeah. that's right we're seeking potential opportunities later on mm -hmm. uh, you just don't do farming by yourself and you know get everything by yourself you have to do the sharing part of opportunities also. Mm -hmm. so what is very important in bayanihan poultry program okay we share that yeah. sure what's the purpose of the visit well uh, uh there is an opportunity for guam export mm -hmm. for free range eggs all right and uh, one business fr businessman from from guam mm -mm would like the USDA to check, certify, and accredit specific farms regarding regarding the U uh, the quality of the eggs that will be sending. Mm -hmm. Because the eggs from Guam is coming from the mainland. China? Ah, uh, uh, US. No. No. Um, All right. we, don't, we don't get anything from... <laughs> <laughs> Russell <Russell's> goes... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, from the US. From the US. So okay. from California, it takes around from by ship three weeks. By ship. Right? Wow. More or less. More or less, yeah. So it's not yet it's not fresh anymore. Stop, yeah. Freshness. And the the Filipino community there in Guam is a lot. Mm -mm. So they like more fresh produce mm -mm. coming from other and of course, because our the the businessman is also a Filipino mm -mm. with the uh, a Guam resident, Guam mm -mm. citizen, so we would like to have collaboration opportunities with them. Mm -hmm. So this is opening, hopefully opening new opportunities for local farmers mm -mm. on a more specialized system. Because the problem is we cannot keep up with the volume production. The only way we can keep up with the export is high value crops, mm -hmm. high value produce. Because we can be overrun by big countries mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, production. Mm -hmm. so, hi, I see your shirt, Agribusiness. Yes, yeah, sir. You, you can see are, are you on YouTube. Is it a, a media? Yes, uh, I'm a YouTuber. Oh, a YouTuber. YouTuber, yes. We have uh, strong followers. Mm -hmm. uh, something like 1 million followers YouTube and Facebook combined. Just in the Philippines? Y it's Philippines and Philippines abroad. Oh, okay. OFW. Yeah. Doing uh, agriculture, anything related to agriculture. Uh, that's why, because we're trying to encourage Filipinos to go back to, go back. to farming. <laughs> yeah. And start farming.
I think there's probably some economies of scale as they become more farmers, the holdings become bigger, yes, the yes. land holdings, the operations become yeah. uh, larger. Mm -hmm. We just, you know, we just help farmers promote their businesses. Ganon lang talaga. Gary. 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 Sabi ko, kaya, eh, eh, sorry ko naman, yung parang, ah, hindi, hindi sa ayaw eh, hindi sa ayaw, pande, you know, ah, baka na naman, ako na naman, sabi ko naman, <laughs> pang isipin naman kasama natin, ako na naman, so, yun ang pan ko din, ang, kaya, sila hindi ko sa kanya na, pakiiba na lang, sabi ko, so, uh, as, as ordered by Doc, as uh, requested by Doc, Eh, eh, ako yung munang ni Doc kasi eh. <laughs> Nung kausap ko na si Doc, ikaw din yung sinabi. <laughs> <laughs> eh, sabi ko, ah, uh, eh, sabi ko, sige, oo. Oh, oh. so, yes. Pero kung mapunta mo direct si Cap doon, once you have the opportunity. Apo. Ayun, ang tiket. Oo. Ang tiket. pumunta doon. Dahil, kumbaga, level up na rin yung production niya, may outlet mm -hmm. na rin siya. Saka very phenomenal din yung ginawa niya kasi yeah. siya yung nag-open talaga ng market din din sa sa area. I grew up in Balungo. Taga saan ka? Balungo sir. Kaya familiar ako dun sa... Kaya pala lumiko ka, uwi ka na pala. Pero yung stay in Manila. In Manila. Pero madaling na kayo dito. Lagi nga ako nasa Pangasin, hindi nga ako nadadaan. Lagi kong nadadaanan. Direct na tanong mo sa kanya, kailan ang ani mo? Doon ka pupunta pa. Pupunta ng... Oo nga sir. Kahit walang ano, meron naman eh. Ang ganda mo, may receiving kang ano, parang pari. Oh, it's a training center. A training center. It's 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 a sustainability and business mm -hmm. kasi that's the real reason why you do farming eh. mm -hmm. so si Dr. Cruz po yung tamang person na lapitan in terms of uh, brown chicken it's really uh, sabi nga nung mga European sinabi sa akin what you're doing in the Philippines is a crusade mm -hmm. because Everything is against you. Commercialism, yeah. mindsets of consumers, mindsets uh -huh. of farmers, the protectionism mm -hmm. on the side. Right? So it's really uh, the 10-year cycle of this mm -hmm. uh, has uh, proven to be very effective once you instill knowledge. Mm -hmm. Doon ko nakita yung Pilipino pala, basta marunong umunawa, mm -hmm. makinig. Mm -hmm na unawaan niya yung sistema, mas gugustuhin niyang gawin yung tama mm -hmm. kesa ron sa akala niya kasi mar maraming knowledge nung time na 1950s, 60s mm -hmm. na we were deprived of the basic knowledges of uh, of real farming as mm -hmm. a backyard system or small holder mm -hmm. versus sa ibang countries, they really teach the whole model uh, we only followed what the American system followed mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. And for us, for one person per hectare per population, uh -oh. it does not fit uh -oh. on that program. Sir, the bus states us also yung uh, homesteading. Yes, nila. they're encouraging that. Uh -oh. Pero di ba sa Pilipinas, dap ganun naman tayo talaga dati, di ba? Sa umpisa pa lang, ganun na ganun tayo. Na tayo. Oh. We just need the right knowledge and tools to do it. Mm -hmm. Kaya first with the knowledge, second is the genetics. Mm -hmm. Irregardless if your knowledge is already, if you don't have the right genetics, you don't have the right results. Mm -hmm. So you're gearing for this result, but your your tools are not enough. So these things has to be well balanced. 
Dok, wife ko si Kat. Ma'am, maganda araw po. Uh, habang nag-e-edit ako, sa, sa room ko namin kasi ang nag-e-edit, uh, madaling araw, sa tulog siya, pero nakikinig siya. Pag-ising niya, ang ganda-ganda naman yung e-edit mo. <laughs> magaling itong director mo. Sir, sabi ko, ang galing naman ang interview mo. Hindi, magaling yung director. Pero yung muna pa, ano ako roon. <laughs> May message ko nang yun before, dined mo niya ako. Pero nung, ano, Itong kasama ni sir, nag-explain. Ay, may ari ng pharma. Pero nung si sir ang nagsabi. Kasi nga, no, protocol, no visitors. Ganun mm. sila ka-strict dun sa farm No visitors talaga. Dahil yung virus? Oo. Yung mga ano kasi, yung daming ano eh. Yeah, yeah, no? uh, ang daming sakit na parang ano yung before covid parang yun yung covid ng mga manok eh siya yung may ari ng farm tapos paano siya mentor niya si sir ah mentor niya si sir ang ganda ng farm niya ang ganda so, nga eh alinis po na? napakalinis ah, napakalinis no? ang ganda talaga hindi rin may ito yung ano niya lalo po yan pagtagulan na green pag green pag na rin yan oh, tapos nandun yung manuka niya. niya galing ano lang no sobrang maliit yung barangay road ah oh, ganyan ganito po yata talaga sa pag export sila ng eggs papuntang ano part of the protocol <laughs> this is another version of pancit the one we had last yesterday is pancit bihon this is what we call pancit canton <laughs> yeah, the noodles are bigger. Yeah, it's They're more a, Chinese. -like, it's, it's an egg noodle. Though. So that's why it's yeah. called Canton. Yeah, 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 yeah from <laughs> Canton, Cantonese. <laughs> Russell, this is the better half. Hi, uh, how are you next? Florence. <laughs> Florence. <laughs> Florence. Nice meeting you, Florence. Come on, come on, come on. When we come here to this year, we always enjoy the food that they prepare for us. So I've been hearing um, a species, I call it species of kabir, which is big chicken food. Oh, is that, okay. The, how, how would you... The story of kabir is like this. For one, the name kabir, if you, if you understand Arabic, kabir means big. Kabir. Yes. Oh, okay. Big chicken. Uh -huh. Because the one who made it is an Israeli. Uh -huh. okay. Mr. Joseph Katz from, from Israel. Mm -hmm. He developed a, a system that you use the commercial white and mix it with the brown, so mm -hmm. you get the kabir. And call it chicken. No? Yeah. yeah, but however, he, uh, later on, uh, the, the guy passed already the, the science, the geneticist, so it did not continue too much. But the name got stuck with us yeah. because uh, it's a name recall here in the Philippines. They say Colgate, Koda. Kabir, <laughs> the chicken, Sasso, so it's not chicken. really the it's breed. It's a genetic <laughs> company. It's a company. It's not the, it's not the oh, company. Okay. It's not the breed. Company. Yeah. Company. And eventually, it was bought by a bigger company, uh, Hendricks Root, in, in, in Europe. But the genetic line is uh, still there, a small one. But uh, the program is not existing already. We, it, the system has to be based on what is the operating program that's happening. So what? sort of a breed that has that line in, in the colored chicken world we have a colored broiler and a colored layer mm -hmm. dominant our, our program stays in the middle because it is not too meaty but meat enough for you but the eggs are almost similar to a layer because a layer and a, and a broiler has two different worlds you have more meat but less eggs yeah more more feed inputs but less uh, more more meat less production but here on the eggs egg side you have uh, less meat but more eggs so the males in the white uh, layer more uh, production farming is of no use you dispose of that mm. here in the middle it matches the farming of Filipinos local farming because you can use the males for meat and the females for for egg production that is why it becomes sustainable if you do it on a broiler system like the white chicken, you you cannot fight it off with the regular big farmers. So you have two two worlds to to produce income at the same time. 
that's the objective for, for farmers to sustain. Actually, the story of Dominant is the, there's this scientist during the Velvet Revolution, mm -hmm. the time that the wall collapsed, right? The Iron Curtain. So the, the communist then was trying to get all the best genetics around Europe and to keep it as a gene pool in case anything happens, right? So they have this place and uh, the government, their government decided to just kill ev all the chickens, destroy the, because we don't have any more funds. So these scientists, geneticists, went there and asked the court just to uh, lend it and to produce a program for the area. So he got the best Rhode Island Reds, Bartimutra, Susex. That is where Dominant started because the geneticist is the owner of Milan. So you mean the Dominant Asia here is on the sister company of the main uh, Yeah, uh, something like in, that. In so we are independent. We, we develop uh, the program because for every area, every country, there is a specific system of, uh, it's not a pattern, corporate style. Uh, because Dominant came from a family. It's a, it's a family-based corporation. So it just uh, develop as it grows, as, as the pattern grows. So we have Dominant in, in Pakistan, in, in, in oh, India, okay. that are independent from the head office. As we had the, we had the program for Filipino system of Dominant CZ. So, so yours is also independent? Independent. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. So uh, we just import and distribute to farmers, certified parents, huh? so that we will have good, the good genetics with them. Oh, it's so o'clock. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, <laughs> when when the fruit drops, it's still o'clock. When the fruit drops, that's so good. That's time. <laughs> I just want to ask, uh, what's the purpose of the visit? Oh, it, it's a site visit. Mm -hmm. um, we received a request from the Philippine Bureau of Animal Industry mm -hmm. um, to ship uh, table eggs to Guam. Mm -hmm. And we provided a protocol mm -hmm. to the Bureau of Animal Industry to review how we think it can be done mm -hmm. in a manner that doesn't disseminate animal disease. Mm -hmm and um, we're waiting for the AI to respond and in the interim we're visiting different scale of egg operations to see what it looks like. The protocol does not specify between organic eggs or free-range eggs or commercial mm -hmm. eggs, it's just table eggs from the Philippines mm -hmm. um, and it, it provides a uh, a framework for how they could be safely shipped and it's 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 uh, while the impetus is Guam mm -hmm. it's really um, for the whole US all right now the economics probably doesn't support shipping table eggs to the mainland US because mm -hmm. of the cost yes, yes but it would be cost-effective for Guam mm -hmm. and maybe Hawaii I don't know Mm -hmm. So so far, how many sites you visited already? Um, well, we had one virtual tour of a very large uh, commercial facility in Tarlac. All right, and then we visited a site in Rizal, mm -hmm. and here today. And today, so how how do you find the, the farm here today? Oh, it 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 reminds me in any ways. I grew up in a, a rural area. My my father's farm. We didn't have chickens. But the setup is very similar to to um, my father's farm in that the uh, the the hay fields were laid out between the animal production areas. What state is that? Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. Okay. Have so, you been there before? Oh um, no, my one of my brother is uh, in Virginia right now. Oh really? <laughs> in which city? Uh. uh it's in the coastal area. I don't know the Norfolk or Virginia Beach. Yeah, that's a Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach. Okay. No, I'm from the west side of the state, the other mm. side. Mm. So that's it. So uh, hope uh, that will materialize. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hope it will materialize uh, the project. Yeah. Well, the, there's still the, the the Bureau of Animal Industry is reviewing. Mm -hmm. um, 
we've had two back and forth, mm -hmm. and they are reviewing it, and, and they should be responding. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the initial framework will again be general. Mm -hmm. It won't be specific to organic or free range. Mm -hmm. It'll just be table eight. Mm -hmm. In the U.S. system, there's a, there's another layer of um, regulation to be certified as organic. Mm -hmm. um, so that would have to be addressed in the subsequent mm -hmm. dialogue. You you will filter. I will filter. DA will filter. That is the only time that you will allow it to go out and go to the U.S. For me, that is the best way because we're, we're uh, there's a big gap right now between uh, commercial volume and quality yeah. Yeah. Pr produce right that the uh, USDA is requesting so this gap has to be narrowed down by organized farmers skilled and disciplined ones if it's just because of the money it won't it won't run for yeah. us yeah we've seen already the effect so we want to do it for us it's a medal for us because we have the chance to export something that is really grown and produced by real mm. farmers mm -hmm. not businessmen not banks but real farmers that's the objective. So for us, it's just the medal. We're just up for the medal. Yeah. <laughs> That's we are all. hopeful as well that uh, this will make for food. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank God bless you. God bless you. Have a safe see you again. See you again. <laughs>